let's let's start with a football in a field which is traveling at a speed of 2 meters per second and let's say its mass is 1 kilo now let us say you kick it with a force of 3 newtons and as a result of this force this ball moves a distance d and attains a final velocity of 4 meters per second so given these facts we can say that the kinetic energy or rather the initial kinetic energy of the football was let us say ke initial is equal to half into its mass which is 1 into its velocity square which is 2 square therefore we can say it's about 2 joules and we can also say that its final kinetic energy if we write it as kef is equal to half into its mass into its velocity square which is equal to 8 joules what we can also say is that the work done on the ball because of the force of 3 newton is w is equal to f dot d which is equal to 3 dot d and we can see that the angle between the displacement and the force is zero degree because they both are acting in the same direction both the vectors are acting in the same direction so this is nothing but 3d because cos of zero is one now what work kinetic energy theorem says is that the change in kinetic energy of a mass is equal to the work done on the mass or mathematically we can write that the final kinetic energy of the mass minus the initial kinetic energy of the mass is equal to the work done on the mass now we can rearrange this equation to write that kinetic energy final of the mass equals kinetic energy initial of the mass plus the work done on the mass so it's just a way of reaching the equation and making the same interpretation in a slightly different way now let's say if this work kinetic energy theorem is right we can apply this on this problem at hand where we have to find the displacement d so we we know that the final kinetic energy of the football is 8 joules and we also know its initial kinetic energy was 2 joules and therefore this should equal to the work done which is 3 times the displacement and this gives us displacement is equal to 2 meters we can also write the work kinetic energy theorem in a slightly expanded form which would be half into mass into final velocity square minus half into mass into initial velocity square is equal to the work done or f dot d so you can see that work kinetic energy theorem is a fantastic theorem for solving a lot of motion problems so if you have numerical problems which involve acceleration mass velocity and displacement i would suggest that your first alternative for solving the problem should be work kinetic energy theorem rather than newton's laws of motion and i say this primarily because uh, using work kinetic energy theorem you can solve the problems more easily and actually faster so so let's take a numerical problem over here to understand this concept a little better and let's say there is a mass m of 2 kilograms on which two forces are being impressed so we have force f1 let us say which is equal to 5 newtons in magnitude and we have force f2 which is let's say 2 newtons in magnitude and let us assume that the initial velocity of the mass was 0 meters per second now as a result of these two forces let's say the the mass undergoes a displacement and let's say the displacement is 5 meters and let us say that the final velocity is v final i'm sorry this should be v initial so let me label it correctly as v initial is 0 meters per second and the final velocity after displacement of 5 meters is vf now the question is can we apply work kinetic energy theorem to solve for vf the answer is yes you can and once again we state 
the work kinetic energy theorem over here, which says that the final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy should equal to the work done on the mass. Now we know that the final kinetic energy can be written as half into m which is 2 into v final square and initial kinetic energy we know is 0 because the velocity is 0 and the work done would be the sum of the work done by force F1 and force F2. So we'll write the total work done as a dot product of F1 dot d plus F2 dot d where d is 5 meters. So the left side becomes Vf square and the right hand side we can see that F1 is pointing in this direction while the displacement is in this direction. So we label this as D and this as F1 and since this angle is 30 degrees this angle would also be 30 degrees. So we can write F1 dot D as 5 into 5 which is a displacement into the cos of 30 degrees. Now we can also see that force F2 is actually acting in this direction while the displacement is in this direction. So this is your force F2 and this is the displacement and if this angle is 60 degrees we can say this angle is 120 degrees. As a result the dot product of F2 and D would be 2 into 5 into cos of 120 degrees. So it's important to see over here uh, the placement of vectors needs to be correct to find the right angle between the two vectors. And if we solve for Vf what we get is Vf square is equal to 21 minus 5 and you get a negative value over here because cos of 120 is a negative number. And this gives us Vf is equal to 4 meters per second. So you can clearly see that force F1 is actually helping the mass move in the direction of the displacement while force F2, rather the horizontal component of force F2 is opposing the motion of the mass. It's against the direction of the displacement and therefore it is doing negative work on the mass or it is taking out the energy from the mass and therefore the work done is negative and therefore this expression is negative. Likewise, the horizontal component of force F1 is doing positive work on the mass or increasing its kinetic energy and therefore this component is positive.